here with you guys. Uh, 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 oh, so um, over the weekend I DJed. I'm going to DJ a lot this weekend. Um, oh, uh, this couple of next weeks I'm DJing. I DJ last for Friday at the Leighton Star, which is around the corner from where I live. I'm going to DJ this Saturday again at Heathcote and Star, and then next Friday at the Star Bethnal. So all the kind of fucking stars I'm playing at, which is going to be sick. And then um, secondly, yeah. So so, so anyway, so the last last uh, Saturday set, banging, had a good time. Uh, I played. I did this little flyer for it, which I'm very happy with. I'm going to show it off here because, you know, why not? You spend like, a couple of times on Photoshop making things. Why not show it off? Uh, this is the light I put on. Labertiz with Handsome Black Man at the Leighton Star. This is me there. Labertiz here. I took the inspiration from a brand new documentary that's available now on Netflix about the SARS. The last SARS, actually, it's really good. I recommend you check it out. Um, yeah, great time. I had a great time. 9 p.m. to 1. Um, I was able, again, I, I always kind of, re I really like the opportunity to kind of play in places with actual proper CDJs and the proper sound system, even though the sound system was a bit dodgy and late in style, but all in all, not too bad. Um, I just like the, you know, the ability to take some music, come and play this, put it in the USB and then kind of whack it through. Um, it's a bit difficult to judge because, you know, again, because I'm so used to playing so early in the day, like at seven, to kind of push it up to nine, you have to kind of decide whether you want to start really slow or you want to kind of go in hard and then kind of bring it down, right? Because you have to be aware that there's usually beer gardens in these places where people are always hanging out, especially with the weather being so nice. And they usually close around half 10, maybe 11, depending on where they are. So you're hoping that whatever you play, they can hear bleeding through to the garden and that when they come back in, you're still playing good stuff. So they want to sit down and have another couple of drinks, right? You don't want to get in a position where they just all kind of like steamrolling out of the place because they don't like what you play at all. So I tried to keep it kind of loose. Uh, I try to keep it a bit fun and whatever. And then I try and also express a bit of my personality so people can know what I'm about. So I'm not just like some, you know, some flipping uh, DJ jukebox tour guy. So I try and kind of play my own stuff. But again, it's interesting. Good time to do. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. I had a great time. And then next Saturday, again, I'm back again at the Heathcote Star playing. So I really recommend if you're in the area and you want to see what I do in a one or two, I recommend you check that out. I'll get that up on the screen as well because why not? Again, I made a fucking flyer. I'm going to put it out there. So it's another night again I'm doing at the Heathcote Star. Um, again, similar sort of vibe in terms of the flyer wise, you know, last stars and stuff. Now I'm going to go to with myself, handsome black man. We're doing the damn thing. Oh, you know what I did? So, um, that's next Saturday, 10th of August. You know what I did? This time around, I wore like a really nice shirt, black shoes, and my new uh, loafers that I've been absolutely banging the hell out of my WB and um, bass, or WJ bass, whatever they call how you pronounce these shoes. Um, I've been absolutely smashing these loafers out, like wearing them every single day, my Weegeons, right? My GH and GH Bass and Co., right? Uh, Stella sort of menswear loafers. I wore a really nice um, shirt with some nice black trousers and kind of did it down thing. I think this Saturday, too, I'm going to wear probably my whole suit. A suit that I've worn probably about four, three times, I think. I wore it for a wedding. I wore it to go to a uh, party and something else, right? So I'm going to wear it again. So, you know, I'm kind of trying to, I'm trying to really kind of absorb this handsome black man um, um, kind of like, you know, identity. At first, I was going to wear these crazy wigs and have these weird suits as my handsome black man kind of persona. But then Tyler brought out his fucking album, uh, Igor, and had that weird character he's playing, right? So he kind of really kind of fessed that up. But I'm still going to go for it anyway. Why not? Just going to start buying Zara suits and stuff and just wear them when I go to DJ. Um, it doesn't make any sense, right? But I think it might just kind of like help to kind of... Uh, it might help myself, right, to kind of make myself feel a bit more like an artist and take this thing a bit more seriously because I think at the moment I'm kind of... The book is starting to ramp up a bit. Um, the money isn't right this is a problem because i think that's a part no one talks about too often right it's how do you press yourself because i know for sure for a fact i'm better than a lot of people out playing it at the moment i'm still not top tier don't get me wrong i shouldn't be anywhere near an x or y or whatever it may be right but i think i'm good enough to play at most of these kind of like you know barry clubby venues maybe the quote unquote nightclub nightclub scene i'm not that ready for just yet but the kind of like cool bar club venue and like your trendy east trendy stuff i can dappy that easy with my eyes closed right but at the moment, you know, maybe my relationships aren't really there where they need to be. So, again, that means I have to go out more. I have to start talking to people and start connecting the dots. Because, you know, just uploading random mixes up onto, onto SoundCloud all the time doesn't really do the job. I Most of my stuff, even this stuff I'm doing now at the moment, has come from relationships, right? I basically got an in with the Star Bethnal Group because of a nice manager I worked there previously who kind of brought me in. And that was kind of basically how I got there. So, um, everything's through relationships. I have to kind of be wary of that and kind of understand where my position is. Um, but going forward... Um, I'm kind of want to want to really detach myself from it and kind of present this other image of this other dude when I'm playing. So that means you know whether it's the nice shirts or the suits, I want to be a little bit 
cleaner, a little bit more professional, right? Whether it's always getting a haircut when I'm DJing, right? Saving the last fucking 20 pound I have and getting a trim. I want to do little things to kind of get me into the kind of artist mode. I'm, I'm thinking of like old school. Remember Mr. Aeroplane back in the day that he used to be like, you know, not back in the day, he's still, I think he's still around now at the moment, right? Mr. Aeroplane, I'm pretty sure. Let's see if I can find him. Mr. Aeroplane's probably still around doing damn thing. It's like, oh, I guess, you know, how dare you say, do you remember Mr. Aeroplane? But he was big back in the day when we were all listening to, oh, Mr. Airplane Man, is that him? Or is it, no, not Mr. Airplane Man, that's a musical group. What group is that? A rock group from back in the day. Okay, Mr. Airplane's a DJ I'm talking about. Um, he's on RA, Mr. Airplane, DJ RA. Let's see if I can find him. Oh, it's just Airplane now. Okay, I guess it wasn't Mr. Airplane, it was just Airplane. So this guy called Airplane back in the day. He used to be in a group, forgot the name of his, but they split and now he's doing it on his own. Oh no, it's called the. No, I'm thinking about the magician. That's what I'm thinking about. The magician. Remember the magician? He was a DJ back in the day. They used to be big during the kind of indie scene, indie dance scene uh, when that was really big. Uh, the magician, right? He kind of had um, that kind of persona where he used to wear like suits and shit when he was DJing. Let me see if I can find him. Yeah, there we go. See, I knew it. I knew I, I was knew what I was talking about. So there's this guy, French dude. I'm assuming, right? Is he French? What is he? Uh, the magician. Shrouded in mystery. Okay, we don't know. Okay, shrouded in mystery. But anyway, this is the this, this is the magician from back in the day. Um, used to be a smasher, and he kind of always wears these kind of really amazing dandy fucking sort of suits. Right? I'm not sure they hide the Aikerman. I'm not sure what they are, but you know, he plays mostly kind of new disco, Afro, no, no, disc, new disco, indie dance, disco sort of vibes, and he kind of wears this sort of stuff. Yeah, they used to be together, right? Airplanes are just as coming. They used to kind of be together, but then they split and kind of did their own thing. Um, and I think he's still out playing now at the moment, right? Let's check his RA. This is like this is like the actor version of IMDb, right? RAs, right? Seeing how active somebody is, <laughs> but he's he's absolutely so okay. He's gonna play at Southwest Four Festival in 2019. Uh, let's see other events he's played at previously. Where's he been at? Um, yeah, he's been at Electric Castle. Did a couple of times in New York. Uh, he's played at, yeah, so he he's been active. Right? He's played basically every month this whole last this whole year, right? For the most part. Yeah, he's been doing his damn thing. But airplane again. So it's kind of vibe I'm kind of going for, right? Handsome black man, um, loads of nice suits, loads of just kind of going, you know, trying to equate the whole handsome thing, just kind of dressing up a bit because mostly whenever I DJ for the most part, I'd be wearing fucking raggedy clothes, right? Not really giving, not really putting any effort into kind of my outfits and my dress code. Um, you can see, you can see that here in my uh, DJ um, Instagram profile, um, which you can find on Instagram, which is DJ Handsome Black Man, all one word, DJ Handsome Black Man on Instagram. Um, this is me, right? I'll show you. Uh, here I am, right? So usually I wear this kind of like, you know, just my my standard kind of going out club wear, which is probably isn't the best thing to be wearing. Um, it's sort of like, you know, these kind of, oh, that's what I'm thinking. If I do go and make relationships, I might have to kind of keep wearing the same thing in it so people know that it's me, right? I have to kind of go a bit dressed up. But anyway, I'll be wearing stuff like that. This is like me, me, me playing the last set, the alibi having a fucking hot, heavy metal long sleeve shirt on a do-rag and a beard, right? Doing the damn thing, playing fucking disco. And I love that, though, because, you know, I gave them I gave them my fucking all just playing fucking cheesy disco wearing the stuff that I was wearing. It was very, very funny. But anyway, um, that was... That's basically my idea going forward. I'm going to do it again. Check me out here. Don't have many followers on Instagram. Only your, your 22. Cause I don't really post much on there. Engage <laughs> is the best. But definitely check me out. Uh, DJ Handsome Black Man. Um, all one word on Instagram for my... Uh, DJ profile but yeah I'm going to be a bit more dressed up kind of like you know kind of get into the persona of handsome black man um, again it's more so in the, under the kind of guise of my default goon blog page which I've got I just I don't know I like kind of surprising people I like walking into a venue people expecting me to be this you know guy that's going to play bass or dubstep or like I don't know um, you know Oh, this camera is not really straight. Um, they, they expect you to play one thing and then you get in there and you kind of understand the crowd. Like I, The best compliment I got was playing at a house party once quite recently um, for this guy that's a friend of a friend, um, very popular in the gay scene. And I kind of walked in and they, and they just thought, oh, no, right? They're gonna, this guy's not going to get it. He's going to be a bit creepy. You know, I don't know. They just, you know, pe people have their prejudices and their stereotypes and they think of people like this. Yeah, so it's all right because they don't know me. So I got in there and I, you know, and I just fucking ripped it to pieces, right? I knew exactly what to play. I knew what they like. And I just tore it apart. And then at the end, they were like, oh my God, man, we we're so surprised. We thought you were going to play this one thing. You pick a bit different. It was very gay friendly. And I'm not gay, right? And I can, and I knew what they wanted, right? And I just gave it to them. Gave it bang, 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 bang. No pun intended, right? And they were so happy about it. And I was like, yeah, this is what I live for. I live for this moment. Like, I know some people would annoy them. Like, oh, how dare you? You don't know this. Like, we invented disco. Black people are doing this. Whatever, right? I don't care. I like surprising people. I like giving them a surprise because you think, I don't know. 
looking at me, you might think I'm going to play you a flipping um, living proof set, right, from beginning to end, but I'm not, right? I'll leave that, I'll leave that for the others because they can do that much better. I'm going to stick to my lane, which is kind of being this eclectic dude, bringing all these different 